What's up guys, Evil Deer here. So today I'm gonna to speak about this new micronation which has just decided to throw itself into existence. Now this micronation is called Libedland. Now for my English speaking viewers, you guys are probably like, what, why do I care? And for the Esperanto speakers, you're probably like, yeah, heard about it. It doesn't really interest me, or, yeah, it's the best thing in the world, oh my god. Okay, so anyway, let's just go ahead and jump into this conversation. So what is a micronation? Because that's probably like the first thing everyone should know. A micronation is basically just a really small nation. Makes sense? Like, a little small, very small? Okay, so, yeah, in reality though, a micronation is generally like a very small piece of territory claimed by like a, a small group of individuals or, uh, you know, who are trying to set it up as like a monarchy or some idealistic type of uh, government system. Um, but that's not always the case. So for instance, micronations include places like the Vatican, Nauru, um, Hong Kong kind of, but that's more like a satellite kind of country, and no one really knows. Um, so yeah, micronations are like that, but they can also be these little things that have been set up by some dude in his room who's put a flag on the floor and go, I declare this as evil deer, land of the great, um, and just says, yes, who wants to become a citizen? And then someone else goes, I'll come. And that's a micronation. So it could be anything in between Vatican and that. And generally, micronations aren't accepted by other countries as real nations. So anyway, let's just go into Liberland now. So Liberland is this random micronation that's decided to pop up in this piece of territory which hasn't been claimed by um, Serbia and Croatia. I think that's correct. Let me just go check my stats. Yes, I was totally correct. It's between Serbia and Croatia. Anyway, so there's this tiny little parcel of land. I think it's like seven kilometers squared. And, um, some local politician from one of the countries has gone, I declare this Liberlando. And he's just Liberlando. I just turned that into an Esperanto word for some reason. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so he's declared this bit of territory and he's now making the rounds around Europe to try and get it declared as an actual nation. So what is my fascination now with micronations? Well, I've always had a fascination with micronations because the whole concept of starting a nation just seems fascinating to me. Is it not fascinating to you? Are you seriously not fascinated in this stuff? It's pretty cool stuff. But anyway, so in Australia, for instance, there is a micronation who's, who? That's been here for about 45 years and that's called the Hutt River Province. Now most Australians probably haven't even heard of it, but if you go back about 20 years, a lot of Australians have heard of it. So if you're younger than 20, I guess you probably haven't heard of it. So anyway, my, um, the, 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 the Hutt River Province is about 45 years old. It was uh, created by a guy who owned a bunch of farms out in WA. Um, and he used this loophole in the law when the government like was doing this corrupt stuff and trying to like, you know, take away his profits or whatever. And he used this ancient loophole in the law and declared a nation. And basically the government wanted to step in and then went, hey, hang on, if we step in, this is going to give him more like recognition. Let's just pretend he doesn't exist. And that's pretty much how it's existed for 45 years. But anyway, I've had a fascination in this particular micronation, the Hutt River province, because in the constitution they declare English, French and Esperanto as official languages. Now. A way, way, way back in the day, I happened to be over in WA and I decided, let's just stop by the Hutt River province, you know, it seems like something you do. So I jumped on a bus and we went there and the first thing you notice is it's out in the middle of freaking nowhere. But when you do get there, um, the entrance to, I suppose, the micronation is basically just this little brick plaque on the, the side of the road that says you're now entering, you know, like the Hutt River province. So anyway, you get in there and then right in the middle is this tiny little attempt at a township. I say attempt because it's literally like five or six houses. It's not much. It's like a little church and stuff like that. Um, and the guy who runs it, he runs it like a monarchy. So he treats himself like the king and then you've got his wife who, um, you know, blessings upon her soul, she's no longer here in this world but yeah he treats it like a monarchy and I'm supposing he's getting to the age where now he'll be passing the, the torch over to his uh, son but anyway so I checked out the place I had a look around there's pretty much nothing there there's nothing that's happened really in 45 years except for tourists just coming in and out in and out and bringing in a steady little bit of profit for him so that's basically the Hutt River province it's just a really good tourist move I guess um, with some kind of legal historical backing so now, back to Liberland. I just want to say first up, um, it's only been alive for a few weeks, so I reckon probably within a month, maybe two, it will just disappear. Because what's most likely going to happen, and it's happened with most micronations that get any sort of media attention, is the local government steps in and goes, nah, that's it, you had your fun, mate. Get the fudge out of here. And they usually send them, like, you know, the police and just take down the flag and say, get out of here, get out, sk skedaddle. And the guys go, whoop, 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 and they, they, they leave, basically. And that's pretty much the end of it, and the dream dies. Um, the other possibility is it will last for 45 years and just be a tourist destination. But let's, let's just for a second assume that it actually does 
get accepted by European countries, which would, let's just say, would probably never happen because what benefit could it ever bring these countries? Because you got to think about, it. why would a country accept a new country being born within Europe? Like, let's say, Europe in, like France, for instance. Why would it accept Liberland as a, a valid country? Like, some random guy pops up and goes, hey, I've made a country. Um, can you give me political recognition? And France is going to go, yeah, sure, mate. Um, well, what benefit do you bring me? Like, can I start a military base on that six kilometers squared of land? No, not really. Are you gonna give me lots of money? No, not really. Are you gonna politically back me when I invade this country? No, not really. So why should I, why, why should I care about you in any fashion? Thanks for coming. We're a democracy here. Let's just assume, somehow get accepted. What could possibly happen on seven kilometers of square land? Well, I guess you could start a bunch of casinos or banks because and it may be some tourism, but it's kind of in an awkward spot. So maybe casinos or banks. Because realistically, you can't have any form of real industry there on that tiny parcel of land apart from banks and casinos, which is pretty much what every other micronation does, except for, I guess, the Vatican, but they did have kind of a banking scandal there. So not really. So yeah, it's basically going to be banks and casinos if it does ever get accepted. So the question I have for the Esperantists is, is that what you want? Do you want to help start a new country? Do you want to invest a lot of time into helping start a new country that's basically going to be banks and, um, what was I saying? Casinos. Because realistically, that's all that could be there if it was ever accepted. Now, I know a draft constitution has been made, but you know, the people on the ground, they're the ones who can rewrite the constitution. So what, you got to think of it in the long run. What, what could really happen, one, and I see a whole lot of people signing up for citizenship what will that ever bring you? Will you be able to use their passport? No. Will you be able to move in to the seven kilometers of square land and go, I declare this one meter squared my territory now? Probably not. They will never accept you in there. So it will probably be a bunch of locals if they ever did get accepted, start it and then just go, this is free market, you know? Banks and casinos, let's make us and our families a bunch of money while the rest of the 200,000 people have signed up as citizens can just sit at arm's distance and hopefully one day walk through our territory because realistically that's all that will ever happen now anyway that's the end of my video that's all i wanted to say on it feel free to hate on me i love a good hating come on bring it i'll take you on i'll meet you out back behind the esperanto flag Woo! no anyway so yeah feel free to hate on me or like this video and share it with your friends and subscribe but if it ever does become anything more than banks and casinos, just remember, I will be a very good supporter. I will, I will help in many good ways. Just give me access to the banks. <laughs>